so then the conscious being, the, the, the self, I call it satiety, uh, to indicate these special, these entities, fundamental entities that have these properties of identity, consciousness, and agency with free will. Uh, so this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, these entities control, they may or may not control, they exist even without a body. They can interact even without a body, and uh, they exist in a way that if they have a body, then they can communicate with a reality, which is the reality that the body perceives. So there is a sea of symbols, and the body perceives only a small portion of the sea of symbols, transforms it into a way, into, into, into uh, information, which is essentially... Uh, is, is, is a form of quantum, is, I call it live information, is an intermediate form between classical information and quantum information. And, the, and in such a way that uh, the consciousness can actually have an experience of what is perceived by the body and processed by the body. And this is exactly what happens when our body, for example, controls an avatar in a computer. And the avatar in the computer is is not part of this physical reality. It's part of a virtual reality. It's, it's, it's a program and the data inside a you know inside a, a memory, and uh, but we experience it as if it was another reality. So, for example, where is the space or the characters or the trees or whatever there is in that virtual reality that we see? They are certainly not in the in the in the memory in the memory of the of the computer, right? But we see trees and characters and space, and you know we are, they're all constructed by the transformation of that information into the information that our senses and our body creates, and then into the information that our consciousness perceives and, the, and, and as virtually as a reality, but it is a virtual reality. The, the explanation of quantum mechanics is very simple. Uh, since, uh, you know, it's basically uh, what we have called collapse of the wave function is actually a free will decision of a satiety and a, a, a conscious entities uh, with those characteristics that I described is a free will decision. So it's a creation. It cannot, it cannot be algorithmic because free will cannot be algorithmic. So it is a free will decision that transforms quantum information into classical information. And, 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 and it is, in, in this case, coherent with the meaning of probability because whatever manifests did not exist before the manifestation. When in, when in classical physics, one manifest existed before because it had probability one of, of, of occurring. In this case, the, you know, Quantum physics will only give you a probability that something might manifest, but it will, cannot tell you what will manifest. What will manifest instead is what an entity has created, which is a free will decision. So it will manifest whatever he has decided to manifest. Now, from the outside, since you don't know what might manifest, you have to call it a probability. But from, from the inside, from the society that made the decision, that is not a probability. That is what he decided to do. When I decided to go to a movie, to an observer of me, he says, oh, well, you know, he might go to the movie, or he might go to a restaurant, or he might and assign a probability to various different states that I might be in. But for me, I made the decision consciously and because I wanted, you know, in, in co a coherent with my intention and what I wanted to go to the movies. And so for me, it's not a probability. Consciousness needs classical memory to... to uh, to, in order to store its experience. In other words, there is no, I mean, people think that you can have quant, you can put into memory a quantum state. No, you cannot do that. Quantum bits cannot be put into memory or they, 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 they evolve, they, you know, and they interact and so on. So there is a continuity, there is a dynamism that is that, that in order for, in order to, uh, to, uh, to create continuity with something that you experience before, you need to put into long-term memory your experience. 
symbolically and the symbolic and when you put and what you put into your long term memory uh, that symbolic memory is a is a, a small portion of what you were experiencing because what i was experiencing was a pure quantum state i w- that pure quantum state was known from the inside but when i but i cannot clone it i cannot reproduce it not even i can reproduce my own state the, the, you know the the uh, the uh, no cloning theorem in quantum physics is pretty strict about it. You know, no one can, you know, that quantum state cannot be known. Period. So, uh, from the outside, only a portion of it. So I can only put portions of it into long-term memory, and then recognize them as you know as a memory of an experience later. But but uh, I cannot store I cannot store my experience. Uh, per se. The Big Bang is a way we can interpret the equations that seem to work and that work well, though there are many questions still open, but the equations that we have of physics, you know, that all, all show that there has to be, that there has to be an expansion uh, uh, for the universe. So if you reverse, and they are all reversible, so if you reverse the time, then, uh, you know, then uh, this expansion has to, be, to become a contraction. And so if you in, try to interpret what those equations are saying, you have the picture that we call the Big Bang Theory. But that assumes that the, the equations that we have, first of all, have been valid that way from day one. Who says so? You know, I mean, there is evolution of everything, but not of the equations of physics. Come on. I mean, you know, so... If, if it works, you can make it to work by jerry-rigging it, and we have made it to work, but it doesn't mean that that's the way things happen. And in fact, if the, if the, as, you know, if I'm saying that the reality, that we, what we call reality, uh, the physical reality, is the only, this, the, the, the symbolic aspect of reality, where the, real, the deeper reality is the semantic reality, the, the, the meaning that, the, the, Conscious entities and one get out of, ex, you know, living, <laughs> existing, and so so then in this in this if you start with this concept, then the physical laws have to be the development of a language of the language of entities that, that talk to each other, and the reason why language is important is because we obey the language because we want to communicate. But it's not the constriction that the laws of physics, you know, uh, you know, bring with them. The laws of physics are something that, that that's it. You know, they, from day one there are these laws, and forever there will be these laws. But if laws instead are really the expression of something deeper, which is the communications of conscious entities that communicate with each other symbolically, and the symbols, since they need to represent the meaning that it has its own logic, its own structure. So the symbolic aspect of reality has to reflect, to be proper, to reflect this more deeper symbolic uh, structure of meaning. Then the laws of symbols have evolved with the this, with this self-knowing of one, because the self-knowing of one you know, has been evolving over time in this model. You see? So, so it, it, the, the entire narrative changes once you accept that consciousness must be fundamental. Because it, if consciousness is fundamental, it must have had an impact on the way the, the world works. But that's not what is described by, by cosmology. Cosmology describes a world in which consciousness developed 13.8 billion years ago. And one, by the way, did not create in, that, in the sense of creation. One discover itself you see you know it, you know each discovery is a creation but but it it is a novelty even for one you see it's not that one knows what he wants and creates something i mean th- this is the kind of you know old god right i mean come on yeah. i mean th- this is yeah. this is childish but you know but one one that wants to know itself awakes and wants to know itself and you know and, and you know, so all of a sudden, any new things that he knows about itself is a new entity, like I said earlier, 
but is, is an entity that now can know itself in turn. And so now we have this cascading of and this explosion, this explosion of entities that want to know itself, that create, and, and the expansion is an expansion of, not in physical space, is an expansion in the semantic space of knowing, in the semantic space of meaning, and of which the expansion of the universe is the correlate, the physical correlate of this expansion in this universe, the of meaning, which is not this physical universe. Is this, this physical universe is, is just, uh, you know, is what we see, our body sees of a reality that we don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm sure that you read the book of Don Hoffman, for example, you know, that talks about, uh, about uh, you know, that what we see is only, you know, it uses the word icon on the, on the you know, icon in, uh, the, 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 you know, icon in the, in the display, right? You know, where, where we see an icon, but the icon is a representation, is a representation of something of much deeper processes go, go on in a computer, which we cannot see. And, and we think that the icon is reality, but the icon is, is not reality. It's simply the way the body sees this deeper information uh, and presents it to us, and we see an icon. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I mean, you know, I, I had arrived to the same conclusion, not, not said in, a, in this uh, crisp way, but, you know, that what we see is not what is there. I mean, cognitive scientists think that what we see is veridical, meaning it's, it's pretty close to, you know, what is actually here. Well, not a, not a chance. Not a chance. I mean, we. I mean, here, for example, here in this, you know, cubic foot of nothing that is air. You know, there are now at least a hundred thousand simultaneous phone conversations going on. If I had the right tool, the right, you know, cell phone to pick each one of them, and they're all going on here. I don't see them. So, do they, you know, can I claim that they do not exist? because I don't see them. And of course, uh, you know, 200 years ago, we didn't even know that uh, electromagnetic waves existed, so they couldn't possibly exist because it, there wasn't even the concept of electromagnetic wave. So how many other concepts we have yet to, to discover? After all, we have discovered in the last 50 years the concept of dark matter, the dark energy, that 75 years ago, nobody knew about it. So you see, we, we're, we, we keep on discovering new things, then we reinvent ourselves, we reinvent our theories to include the new stuff that we, that we discover. But can we claim that we know everything that there is? I mean, you know, it, it would be dishonest to say so and disingenuous. The Big Bang is a representation of something much deeper, of some phenomena which are much deeper, which could never be understood unless we say that consciousness existed even before the big bang because the big bang is the is the you know the you know is the encapsulates aspects of the evolution of our evolution which we are the creator of of this universe collectively not me or you collectively we all have created and god knows how many gazillions of other you know conscious entities there are that collectively have created this. So, so being the creators of this, we cannot accept that the laws of physics, you know, were imposed at, at, at the beginning of everything. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. They, they had to be evolved. They had, they must have co-evolved. They must have co-evolved with the comprehension, with the not self-knowing that we have achieved over time over you know over the eons so that then the symbolic representation of our understanding as all the richness that there is but not an, but not all of it a, a sufficient richness to re, to be a representative of something which is richer which is our experience because our experience being associated with being described by represented by a quantum, a pure quantum state, cannot be reproduced, cannot be in, 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 in its entirety, can only be, you know, can only be known in part, one bit per qubit, as we know.
theorem of the libo so so you know so we can only see information which is shareable for classical information which is a, a shortcut a very sh or, or a small amount of what each of us feels and you know that you know you can understand that because the love that you feel for someone or for a child or for whatever that love you can you know that is so much deeper than what you can express in words and words are classical symbols shareable symbols